stillness has an influence over us. That's a very not really talked about thing. Stillness influences us. We do meditation. We often bring sort of subtle agendas into meditation. And there's various forms of it. But ultimately, the way I see it is that when we sit and the mind is very active, we get to a point where the mind begins to settle and enters a stillness. And that's influential. It's like, it, it doesn't make much sense rationally speaking because we think we find influence through the rational mind, through problem solving, through rehashing. But stillness influences. It's not, you know, just the experience of stillness itself. It's influential. We're all aware that the problem solving mind is, you know, it's the thing we turn to when we find ourselves faced with various problems. And I can't sit here really and say, you know, why it is that stillness is so influential. But I'm basing this on experience. If you do this long enough, you begin to realize there's like this association with the degree to which I can become still and the degree to which my problems seem to be solved for me. So this is about coming to value stillness, not just as an experience, but as an influential power in our lives. It's what we value, it's who we turn to, what we turn to when we are in need of help. And you'll know, I mean, how many times does the rational mind take a problem and re revisit it, reanalyze it, weigh up the pros and cons, and does that, and then does it again, and then does it again, and does it again. Don't get me wrong, there's a place for the, the rational mind to come in and have a, a look at the seemingly apparent pros and cons of whatever problem we're facing. That's normal, that's to be expected. All I'm saying is, don't underestimate the influence that stillness can have on that problem once you've allowed yourself to weigh up the pros and cons of what it might be. It's really your higher mind that's having the influence, your higher self, the higher part of who you are. We could almost say it speaks in stillness. Stillness speaks. In that sense, it's very, very influential. Now, it doesn't speak the same way the rational mind does with intrusive thoughts. And uh, you ever notice how it's always, almost always kind of lose-lose scenario? If I do this, it's not good. But if I do that, it's not good. And it gets stuck in this paralysis of indecision. Through stillness, I found that uh, all those lose-lose scenarios kind of become win-win scenarios. But it's not, you know, you don't get to that point through overhashing and reanalyzing everything. It's stillness will bring you to that realization. So when we sit in, uh, in a reflective period, you can call it a reflective period, you can call it meditation, call it prayer, whatever it is that you want to call it. We don't try to achieve stillness. We value stillness. That's how it's achieved. 
we, we see it as that's very, very useful. When I'm not thinking, something is happening. See, we've been conditioned to think that when, when I'm not thinking, my mind is blank, nothing is happening. Here's the crazy thing. When our mind is rehashing and reanalyzing, when that's happening, the truth is the mind is blank. That's actually when the mind is blank. So when we sit, it's a good idea to kind of relax your body as much as you can. This can take a little while. It could take a few minutes to just start to relax the body and allow the mind to race, to let it do its thing. It's not about repressing it. It's not about stopping it. You absolutely let it run with the problem solving and the rehashing and the analyzing. But through valuing stillness and seeing it as influential and useful, it makes it so much more likely that we will get to that place of stillness.